Hello, everyone. This is OPS, Olympic Peninsula Spotlight. I'm your host, Rick Nichols. And I'm Matthew Ornick. This full-service recording studio also offers in-house mastering, CD and DVD duplication, digital transfers, and audio restoration. Circle of Sound, reasonable rates, and local convenience. This program is also brought to you by Marisa's Modern Music and T-Shirt Design. We offer concert and event PA equipment rentals and custom art T-Shirt Design and Screen Printing. That's Marisa's Modern Music and T-Shirt Design.
Hello, welcome to Olympic Peninsula Spotlight. We've been out for a little bit, but we're back in the saddle. And to kick this off again, we have Jacob Price in our studio. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. My name is Jacob Price. I'm from the greater Olympia area right now in Lacey. And uh, I do a wide variety of music. Mostly I'm known for acoustic and hip hop music. Here I'm uh, discussing my hip hop style. Right on. So, um, how long have you been been making music, uh, hip -hop uh, specifically? I started playing guitar when I was seven, uh, and then it kind of it kind of evolved from there. Maybe uh, around nine or ten, started uh, writing here and there, but it really uh, broke out more so when I uh, when I was about fifteen. Uh, I started taking my guitar to school and. Uh, People really liked it, but I still wasn't okay with singing around people. Uh, I went to rehab when I was 16 and uh, became more okay with it there. And uh, right around 17, I started uh, writing more so and met up with a, a good friend of mine, uh, Jay Rush, who is, or for a long time, has been my producer um, and is still a part of the production work as a kind of like a checks and balance system where I really trust his ear. So uh, I'd say uh, as far as the style of music that I'm doing now and, and, and the uh, the direction I'm going in uh, probably for about 10 years now. Right on. And uh, what would you say like got you into it uh, at, at me, first? Music, music in general I've always, I've always been driven to be a part of. Uh, I like uh, rhythm, I like melody, I like singing. But as far as feeling that it was something that I could adopt as a, 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 not just an interest, but a hobby and also possibly a career, it wasn't until I was, uh, I think, 12 or 13 with uh, Eminem coming out that it was, uh, it like made it, it made it visible, it seemed possible. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a white kid, I mean, the story yeah. went, the white <laughs> yeah. kid from Detroit can make it out in a uh, predominantly black genre um, but it was also uh, neat that he mm -hmm. could say what he wanted. Uh, but again, it wasn't until it wasn't until I was introduced uh, that uh, Jay and I met each other mm -hmm. that uh, I saw the reality of looking at uh, digital audio workstations and seeing the reality of being able to do something from home and have it be something that was uh, even independently viable, let alone commercially viable. Yeah. Um, we actually had another rapper who said almost the exact same thing about Eminem. Yeah, that was definitely like a big. So I mean, if you're if you're ever if you're ever like... watching this, Marshall, you know, <laughs> thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, um, your success has definitely been a big uh, yeah. push for a lot of other people. Uh, who also, probably wouldn't do it during I guess during that time, um, Tech Nine came like really came to the the forefront of independent music, as well as I was introduced to Insane Clown Posse, which. I'm not a, I'm not like a, a huge fan. I'm not a juggalo. Uh, I'm also not a technician. But the independent successes of those, uh, the imagery that that Psychopathic put out that I bought into before I even knew or heard their music, and then the the success and the drive of of, of Tech Nine and the skill of people like Chris Calico really inspired me at the at, at that time in life to see what was possible and and. Um, even get inspired to, to do things uh, beyond. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, maybe Eminem was the answer, but uh, <laughs> from why, why you said you started playing the guitar, right? but then you obviously shifted over to hip hop. Mm -hmm. was, was there a reason to just like hip hop more? Or no, no, I, it was actually a fusion. Of, it actually fused for a minute because originally I started, you know, when I was a kid being rebellious, I was listening to Cash Money. You know, everybody liked back that ass up. Damn it! Right. <laughs> uh, but then hearing, True. but then hearing Eminem come out and uh, hearing hearing the way rap was, I liked rapping, but I never looked at it as a as a fusion at all. And when I did go to rehab, there was a gentleman there who I I, I don't attribute m m my drive to, but he incorporated guitar and rap, mm -hmm. and I was I was blown away. He wasn't really that good, but the idea was okay. like yeah. I can take this rap that I've already been doing. And I can play guitar. Let me see if I can do it at the same time. And when I did, it was yeah. really, uh, it was socially uh, successful. Right on. That kind of makes sense because, like, the origination of rap kind of stems from, like, the funk era way yeah. back in the day. So, and, so it was the guitar. And, and like I said, again, it, it's it, not too much it, of a... A lot of 
I won't say my success because I'm not successful yet, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my my uh, carrying on with rap. When I met Jay, I was introduced uh, so that I could record my acoustic and or acoustic style rap stuff. And he was really adamant about, hey man, uh, rap to this beat, rap mm -hmm. to this beat. And after maybe four or five, I was I was like, well, why don't we make our own beats? Mm -hmm. and, and at that point, everybody who was hanging around was like, no, it's not, you can't, no way. But you, <laughs> and, you did it though. Yeah, yeah, I- uh, <laughs> You stepped I, up. I tried, I, I kept trying, kept trying, kept trying, and uh, literally trial and error, hours, mm -hmm. hours upon hours of probably, I mean, hundreds of hours of time doing stuff that yeah. was terrible. <laughs> uh, and, and then eventually I was able to, uh, get a small grasp on uh, things that sounded and felt good. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like your, the music that you make, so you, you definitely have some talent there. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. So um, I like to ask all the different ways that you're proficient in, in making beats, so do answer that, but talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the digital side. Well, I, I feel that I'm definitely not on the cutting edge of making beats. There's a lot of people out there that are doing a lot more than me. However, uh, I use Reason for the most part, which is uh, it's a digital beat making or instrumental making uh, station where there's there's uh, there's stock sounds that you can use, but you can also tweak those sounds to make what you want. You have you know between anywhere from eight. Uh, to 10 pieces of equipment and then effects that you can put on the virtual synth technology that you can put on them, whether it's reverb or uh, flanger or whatever it is that you need to change your instrumental to sound uh, professional. Um, but then also, uh, recently I've been getting into cross, uh, almost uh, uh, crossing those programs. My uh, Adobe, I use Adobe Audition. I know a lot of people are fans of Pro Tools, but I use Adobe Audition. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to have the M box. I don't know if you do with Pro Tools anymore, but uh, isn't Pro Tools like for Mac? It, well, you can use Pro Tools on a non on a non Mac, but again, you have to buy the M box, which mm -hmm. can sometimes be a little more expensive than the 150 buy of, of a regular uh, audio conversion box. But uh, but what I've been really seeing uh, as, as something that I'm interested in and is really fun is using instrument or reason as an instrument where you can keep both programs running. You your DAW, whether it's Pro Tools or or. Uh, uh, Adobe or if you like uh, whatever whatever DAW you're using you can actually run live you can you can run that live and listen to it and then use the recording uh, all of the instruments that are in reason and record them live export your your uh, uh, stem that you just recorded let's say you recorded a neat violin part to your favorite rush track you can just play the rush track record the violin part export it and then mix it all down and now you have a violin part added to your favorite rush track that's probably copyright infringement <laughs> but it's awesome yeah right on um so what what is your your favorite medium is is digital as far as for making you... making music yeah or recording or or just playing um recording Recording digital, to me, I, I haven't really done a lot of it, uh, recording on non-digital. I really like digital because you can go back and, and change and and, uh, and even improve on minor minor parts. I, I don't have a lot of experience uh, in, in uh, recording live to where I, I know that technology is there though. I've seen, I've seen the technology where someone can sing la 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 and then one of those was slightly off timing and, and it can be stretched or bent. I've seen, I've seen it happen in studios. I've seen marvelous technicians. They're, they're, they're uh, engineers today, insane. I'm not up there though. So for <laughs> me, definitely a, a recording. I have never touched a violin in my life and been able to play it. So for mm -hmm. me, being able to try to mimic a violin as close as I can with a keyboard is the most productive way that I can go about it so far. Yeah, definitely. And that's how uh, Stevie Wonder, everything he did was on a keyboard and it sounded like a full band. Yeah, I, <laughs> Steve's one of my favorites. Um, so there are people nowadays, um, music's always got controversy. When it comes to digital media, I notice um, people tend to scoff and say, oh, those people aren't talented. The program does all the work for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I um, think I think that that's a valid argument. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I think that uh, if, if you were to say that uh, the people that have pride in their creations, uh, that it's all validated, 
it, that'd be wrong because I didn't create the technology that I'm using. But to be fair, when was the last time that your favorite guitarist that said there was no talent in production music? When was the last time they made their guitar? Yeah, right. Uh, they don't. That's a good point. Or even screw it, make your strings. Or when was the last time that they, they, they you heard something that they played that didn't sound almost exactly like a mirror image of something remote. And then he said, well, I wasn't trying to make it sound like, you know what, there's nothing. There's nothing original in music. So for me, I think it's not so much about the talent of what, of what you're trying to do. It's, it, it wouldn't matter what you're trying to do. If, you, if your intention was to hurt someone, but you ended up blessing and, and, and pleasing many people, I'll look, at the, I'll look at the people being happy versus, so for me, uh, you know, a lot of the time people will say, uh, why don't you go back to your acoustic stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot better. I like that better, you know? Yeah, it's more real. Right. Probably. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and those same people will say, you know, I like your, you know, your electronic stuff, but, you know, it is what it is. Real music, man, and guitars and drums, and where's your... <laughs> okay. But at the same time, I mean, if you would have went to shows in the beginning of when I and we were doing stuff, you just as real as those songs are in headphones, mm -hmm. you just don't get the same response out of a crowd. You just, I mean, you don't sit there with the guitar saying, you know, everyone get out of your seat <laughs> and enjoy my show and be energetic. Yeah. One, belong, one belongs in a club and the other belongs in a coffee house. And I want to be in both, but in, in the interim, I wanted to really explore getting people out of their seat versus uh, having them be wowed. Definitely. Um, so you're part of a music group it's yes. called Blunt Music, right? It's not so much of a, a music group rather than a name to represent an emotional idea. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually, Blunt Music is part of a larger, a larger entity called Blunt Entertainment. A lot of people don't know that because I don't really talk about it a lot. I don't want to, I don't want to have people expect things that aren't going to be there in the near future. But I do, I do intend on um, making videos. I do intend on having clothing products. For example, I have, you know, the What's My Name shirts made. I got them in gray and I got them in black. So, you know, that this is all, this is all part of Blunt Entertainment because as you can see, these make no sound and therefore they're not part of Blunt Music. <laughs> Uh, however, uh, blunt wear is going to be uh, a real thing, as is uh, as is the the film, and as is uh, more music. Um, I'm sure it'll expand even uh, further beyond that. But at the time, we were uh, we were kind of me and my buddy Jay. We were kind of subscribing to other people's projects. You know, people would have, I believe, um, buddy Cyrus. Shout out, Cyrus. How you doing, sir? Uh, you know, he had. Northwest Kill is going on for a second. We all kind of did that. And then uh, there was a larger, like, backyard wrestling thing, uh, juggalo thing that was going on. Um, it was, uh, what was that? AXE, uh, Amateur Extreme Entertainment. There was supposed to be, like, a paintball wrestling and music thing going on. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, minor. But at the time, I felt that uh, most of the stuff that we were participating in was really ill representative of what I wanted to be doing. I didn't have a good idea like a, a, specific, a specific dream or a specific goal in mind. I just knew that hearing things like kings of the underworld, rulers of hell, whether I believe in Jesus or I don't believe in any of it all, I definitely am not a king of the underworld. And I don't right. really feel like uh, people listening to uh, eating corpses is a bad thing. I just felt like it wasn't quite what I was trying to say. Maybe not your direction. Right. <laughs> and so uh, being the weed head that I was at the time and also being, a, a, I, I've always been an extreme proponent and in support of free speech. Um, and so blunt, blunt music was a, it was like, it was, a, it was an epiphany. Uh, I wanted to do honest records. <laughs> I wanted to do honest records right. because I felt that the industry generally at some point, some way, is shady. And so I wanted to be a record company, somebody that produced music and would put out music for people that were just saying what they wanted to say and wasn't gonna fuck you over uh, in the background. But yeah. Jay wasn't down with it. He didn't feel like it was really uh, really marketable, that honest record people didn't really people wouldn't really respond well to it. So I thought for, you know, I must have thought for a good 20 minutes, just like, blunt music. 
<laughs> you did start it. Yeah, your, yeah, okay. it was, uh, and you I told, on your own. yeah, basically what I told him at the time, I mean, you know, it's a little bit, of, I guess, a little more history, but uh, at the time I told him, I was like, look, I'm out of the whole thing. I'm not doing other people's mm -hmm. projects anymore, and uh, I'm going to do this blunt music. You can come with it if you want, and you don't have to, but this is what I'm doing. And he hopped right. on train, and we've just kind of been doing our thing with little setbacks here and there ever since. Cool. Um, so where can people hear your music? Pick up your merchandise. Which well, is the best way for viewers of our show to right. learn more uh, about you. And as far as just listening, money, hopefully. if you're just looking to listen uh, to the music or it's even to have just the music, you can go to soundcloud.com backslash bluntmusic360. You can also go to soundcloud.com backslash Jacob underscore. No, that's not a dash. It is an underscore price. That's, <laughs> I know, it's soundcloud.com backslash Jacob underscore price. Also, you can visit our YouTube page, Blunt Music 3, or youtube.com backslash Blunt Music 360. Uh, you can follow us uh, on Twitter, uh, at Blunt Music 360, or at Jacob Olympia, one word, Jacob Olympia. I mean, that's not gonna be all music related, but it's it's gonna be a lot of music relation. Um, we can, uh, we sell shirts at shows. So if, if ever you find out that we have a show going on or any kind of public event, we'll have shirts and also my first CD, Jacob, to pick up. It's only five bucks. Uh, shirts are only 15. So if you want to show up down to an event, uh, usually, usually, <laughs> usually we're really, really accepting of fans. Unless like there's some weird thing where I push you out of the way and tell you I don't have time for you. I've never done that. But, but I mean, Feel free, we're real people. We do appreciate fans coming down to shows. Okay, and um, can people get a get in contact with you? Or do you have a, a different avenue for that? The easiest way to get in contact with me or us is gonna be Facebook. Uh, you can, I mean, I could try to give you an email, I could try to give you all sorts, of, but realistically, the easiest way is Facebook. And you know, Facebook owes me money for promoting them right now, just letting you know, Zuckerberg. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so you know, if you don't want it to be public, feel free to send me a private message on Facebook. I'll talk about any any business that you want or need to talk to. You could even go to uh, you could even go to my Twitter again to to check out updates about what's going on. I have uh, two days from now. I'm going to be doing a, a promotional. It's not really a stunt, but. A, promotional panhandling on uh, on the corner of Martin Way and Galaxy Drive right up by uh, Walmart and Lacey. I don't know if this video is going to come out by then, but... Uh, what day again? Tuesday, so two days from now. Um, I will... Yeah, I should have it up by Monday. So yeah, if you want to come down there and check us out, I'm going to be asking for money, but it's going to be in the form of donation, and it's going to be for local rap. I'm also going to be handing out free discs, selling t-shirts, selling uh, CDs. So it's going to be like a... A mix of local music and and uh, begging. Awesome. Any final thoughts as we head out? Yeah, you know, I just I really want to thank you guys. You guys are doing an awesome thing here, whether people understand no it or problem. not. Uh, you guys really are. Um, local music is so huge in the underground scene. Like, there's so many things that go on that that uh, you or I or or the viewer may not even know is going on. And you know what? You may not be interested in the segment, um, but your friend might. So, you know, I'm not telling you that you have to promote because you like it, but just promote to encourage diversity because that's the only way that you're going to eventually find stuff that you want. If it was only the things that one person liked that ended up getting to you, then we wouldn't have anything. It, it would all be censored material and you never have any great creative works. Right on. And final thing, just if you could have any goal uh, met as an artist, what would that be? I mean, mm, making money. I mean, making money off your music, doing it for a living, just doing it for no, fun. No, no. Eventually, eventually, my end goal is to see uh, anyone who has the drive to make music able to do so, not barred by money, not barred by uh, social stigma, and, it, and not mattering if that music, that style of music even exists yet. And how I, ten, uh, how I plan to see that happen eventually is to create an institute for people that can apply and can bring their families there, that can, that's going to be fed, clothed. You can make music all day long. That's way far in the future. As well as I, I'd like to, I, I realistically in the next decade, 
or two. I would like to create a listening house and, and uh, bring more appreciation for music uh, because there's theaters across America for people to go watch movies. Oh no, we're done. And theater, but Sorry. there's nowhere there's nowhere for people to go and listen to new CDs in a state of the art music theater. True. So I would I would like to give that I would like to give that to myself and to other people. And that would be great. Well, that was Jacob Price. This is Olympic Peninsula Spotlight. Thank you for viewing. Thank you.
saying that you don't like rap. What? I beg you, but you just don't like crap. Yeah. I do it different when I hold my back. I do. Never choking up, burn like ash when I pump the suckers who be on the lower level. The oompa loompas can't fuck with a wrong girl. They long to kill a song that I'm on, but I'm hung like a black man. I'm just hanging out, beats banging out the studio constant. Bam. I keep on waiting for you to put me in an ambulance. Ambulance, 'cause you don't like the ambience. Yeah. But I'm just saying, can we dance? But I don't dance. Yeah. I spaz out like I'm seizing a chance to grab fans. Yeah. I'm hoping they don't cut off hands when I set them on high with a brand new jam. That's my name. But hold that tiny thought and let the beat bang like a lot. Let it slap like Chris Brown putting his fist down. Let the shit pound out of your trunk and throughout this town. Like a kidnapped beat trying to get out the trunk through the fucking backseat. Like Maddie Harris in this bitch. Yeah. Repost if you care about this. Yeah. But I don't care about shit. No. And I never get embarrassed round kids. You suckers got a chocolate scent. How many licks does it take to get your heart less bitter? Look at my heartless Twitter. No. Talking about beefcock like dinner. What? That's my name. Yo, yo, yo. Can't hear ya. That's my name. Yo, yo. You never like rap. Rap don't like you, and that's that. Bitch, rap never gave a damn about you. No, I'm a slave and it's a master. Why the fuck you think I'm out here? Huh? I keep doing what it tells me to do. I've never seen a paycheck, but what else am I do? I don't know. I keep saying that I got nothing to prove, but that's because I got nothing times two. Shit, nothing to lose, so I'ma say what I wanna say. Mm. Fuck rap, mm. fuck you too. The whole genre's gay, yeah. especially your shit. Yeah. Mine's tight, so I guess my height would make it more of it. Did I offend you? Good. I just wanna clarify, so I ain't misunderstood. I may not be the best, but I'm better than you. I had to get that off. Just so the rest of you knew. That's my name. Yo, yo, can't hear ya. That's my name. Yo, yo, can't hear ya. That's my name. Yo, 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 yo. That's my name. Yo, yo, that's me.
with the stress gone I be chillin', sitting, writing on that throne I'm the king of the world king. With headphones on me. I'm still the king of the world. My headphones are my crown. And here inside of them I am the king of the world. You might think that I'm cuckoo, but that's something I'm starting to get used to. You can make like Steve and get a blue clue, but it ain't a mystery. I got nothing to prove. Who the hell do you think I am? I am king with a pen in hand. No bling but a wedding band, but I sing and I'm better than. Forget it, I'm king in these headphones. And you'll never put me in check homes, let alone checkmate. <laughs> Because I get along just great. By my lonesome, only me when I press play. Pouring out what I'm keeping under the breastplate. Yeah, from my heart I'm being honest. Telling the truth, spilling beans like vomit. I really feel like a king with these damn things on. Singing a song. I'm the king of the world with headphones on. Me. I'm still the king of the world. My headphones are my crown. And here inside of them, I am the king of the world. I don't need you to believe in me. Not a thing could deceive me or keep me from being what I already am. I ain't dreaming. I am a literal king. I'm unforgettable. Give the ghetto a hand. Cause it wants to make me think that I am a peasant. Yeah. Poor me, cause I'm always stuck in the present I am. Looking at the past, the future making me hesitant Forgetting who I am and thinking about the president who? Who? But who's Obama to a monarch? Hmm. My heart is in it cause my opinion is my art Jacob the Eighth, make him try hard Cause he makes life look easy But try to kill him, he die hard well, it's Ain't nothing gonna change my mind Nobody gonna break my crown Oh no They ain't gonna stop me ruling the world Oh no They ain't gonna stop me ruling the world Oh no They ain't gonna stop me ruling the world With headphones on Me. I'm still the king of the world. My headphones are my crown. And here inside of them, I am the king of the world. This is Rick Nichols and Matthew Ornick with OPS, wishing all of you a great week. We'd love to hear from you, so contact us at Olympic Peninsula Spotlight at gmail.com. I usually...